All right, so here we have another piston cylinder assembly. So we have carbon dioxide sealed inside of a piston cylinder system. And we have the initial volume given as 0.1 meters cubed. And then it's going to undergo a heat process, which is going to increase the temperature from 300 degrees to 450 degrees. And then we have the weight of the piston and the outside atmospheric pressure combined, which exert 100 kilopascals over the system throughout the process. So in other words, P1 is equal to P2. We have a little summary right here of the processes going on. And we have to assume that we have an ideal gas we're working with, so that's important. And we have the gas constant for carbon dioxide given to us right over here. So a few things we have to find. We have to find the mass of the CO2 inside of the cylinder. It's going to be in kilograms, as well as the final volume of the system in meters cubed. So those two things. Find the network produced during this process, one to two, in kilojoules. And we have to find the heat received by the CO2, which can be called Q12. Um, and see, we're given the specific heat here as 0.912 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So we can start by writing out all of our givens. And conveniently enough, pretty much all of them are given to us right over here. But we're just going to add to that the gas constant, which is going to be R CO2 is equal to 0 0.189. And that's in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And we're looking for the mass. So part A, we're looking for the mass of the CO2. And that's going to be some number in kilograms. We're looking for the final volume, which we can write as V2. And that's going to be some number in meters cubed. And then we're looking for the heat received from process 1 to 2. So Q12, some number. And that's going to be in kilojoules. Now remember we're told that the ideal gas model is valid, so we know that we can make the relationship of PV equals MRT, or in other words, the pressure times the volume is equal to the mass times the gas constant times the temperature. So to get our mass, we just simply rearrange and we have the mass is equal to the pressure times the volume divided by the gas constant times the temperature. And we're going to find it at location 1, so we'll have pressure 1, volume 1, and temperature 1. And that's going to be equal to, and we're going to have it in absolute, so we're going to have it in kilopascals. So 120 kilopascals times the volume is 0 0.1 uh, meters cubed. And then on, underneath we're going to have 0 0.189, and that's kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. That's the gas constant times the temperature at one, which is going to be 300. And once again, that's going to be in Kelvin. And so this is going to come out to be equal to the mass being 0 0.212. And that's going to be in kilograms. So we have the mass right over here. And of course, law of conservation of mass. Mass 1 equals mass 2, which is just equal to the mass. So that's going to be consistent all throughout the process. Now we can go ahead and find the volume at 2. So we have, once again, PV equals MRT. And we're going to have them, this time it's going to be all at location 2. And M and R are going to be constants. So V2 is equal to MRT2 divided by P2. And now we just plug and chug, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.212 kilograms times the gas constant, 0 0.189. That's kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And we're given T2 is 450, and that's in Kelvin. So I'm hoping you can see that the units here do cancel out. And then the pressure at 2 is, once again, 120 kilopascals because we have an isobaric process. And we get V2 is equal to... 0 0.15 and that's in meters cubed now for part b we're asked to find the work from one to two so remember from previous problems that the work from one to two is just going to be equal to the integral from volume one to volume two and it's going to be time or the integral of p with respect to dv or volume and once again, we can just do some plug and chug here. So work from 1 to 2 is equal to the integral again. So V1 we're given as 0 0.1. And V2 we calculated as 0 
and the pressure is isobaric, so it's just going to be 120, and it's going to be dV at the end. And when you plug this integral into your calculator, you'll have that the work from 1 to 2 is equal to 6 kilojoules. So there is the work from 1 to 2. Lastly, we're asked to solve for the heat transfer Q12, or the heat received by the carbon dioxide. And to do that, all we have to do is apply the first law of thermodynamics. So remember that the change in energy, in this case internal energy, because we don't have any kinetic energy or potential energy, and that's going to be equal to the heat transfer Q12, which is what we're looking for, minus the network W12. Now we can rearrange for Q12. So Q12 is equal to the change in energy plus the network. And we already have the network, so that's just going to be a quick plug and chug. But for the change in internal energy, you have to know that the relationship here is that it's an isobaric process. So because it's an isobaric process, you're able to break that unit right over here down into this. You're able to make it the mass times the specific heat times the temperature difference is equal to the change in internal energy and from there on you just add the work one two and it's equal to the heat transfer now we can go ahead and plug in our numbers so we have the heat transfer from one to two is equal to the mass which we calculated as 0 0.212 kilograms and the specific heat was given as 0 0.912 and that's kilojoules per kilogram kelvin times the temperature change, which is 450 is T2, minus T1 is 300. And then you just add the network, which was 6 kilojoules. So when you plug this into your calculator, you should get that the heat transfer from 1 to 2 is equal to 35 kilojoules. And because it's a positive number, it is into the system.